This is John for Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with Mike Herman, Senior Director, Team Travel of the Minnesota Twins. How are you, Mike? I'm doing well, John. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. I, I believe, are you uh, are you in Detroit now? Yes, uh, we left Minneapolis last night after a nice walk off win and got to Detroit. Actually, got to Detroit late last night because of the uh, rain delay that we had to sit through. Well, you you got a sweep though, right? And and so that that's always good. And you're riding high in first place. That, so, that is true. It's always so, better traveling after a win. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure everything's better after a win. On the south side of Chicago, we don't really know about that right now, but but we'll we'll move on from that. Um, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get to uh, the organization of the Twins? I actually started with the Twins in 1999 as an intern in the media relations department. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, in college at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. And I wanted to get into sports, and I thought I wanted to get into sports broadcasting. When that didn't quite pan out for me, I found an internship with the Twins, and uh, that's February of 1999, and I've been there ever since. So I've worked my way through the PR department, uh, was the PR director for a number of years, and then in 2012, about halfway through the season, uh, I was moved into the travel director role, and I've been in that role ever since. So describe a little bit, like, what exactly does your job entail? Well, it's hard to put into just a few words uh, what this job entails because every day is different. Uh, for the most part, the job uh, consists of setting up all of the team travel to uh, spring training, the regular season, during the off season, uh, to the baseball winter meetings or any other travel that the baseball operations department might have throughout the course of the year. Um, but pr primarily my focus is on the major league team. So that's all of our hotels throughout the course of the season, all of our charter flights, uh, buses, ground transportation, uh, equipment, trucks, luggage, all of the stuff that you would think uh, pertains to a major league team moving around the country throughout the course of the season is pretty much under my purview. So I assume you have a large staff. Approximately how many people do you have helping with this? <laughs> well, the, uh, the the travel department, you're looking at it. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's just me. Uh, but I have a lot of people within the organization that I work with um, to make all of the travel seamless, You know, whether that's our equipment manager who handles all of the baseball equipment and making sure that we have everything that we need on the plane um, as it when it comes to you know players you know on field equipment um and then of course our tv partners and radio partners travel with us so we have to make sure that we have all of their stuff um, they have people that uh, get their trunks and equipment to our luggage trucks to make sure that those those things come with us everywhere we go um and then our you know the, the, anyone on the staff can really help me with stuff that i need help with whether that's, like I said, our equipment manager, our PR director, radio engineer, TV personnel, um, coaching staff. Uh, we all work as a team, you know, throughout the throughout the year anyways. So whenever there's help needed, I can lean on people that are already part of the traveling party. So do major league teams have, do they have charter planes? I know, I know they don't each have their own plane, but do they charter planes or do they fly commercial? Uh, we charter. Uh, uh, about half the teams charter with Delta. Um, some teams charter with United. Some teams have their own aircraft uh, that they use uh, or use a different uh, sports team's aircraft. But for us, it's Delta. Uh, they're a good partner of ours at, when it comes to sponsorship. Um, you know, Target Field has Delta signs all over. We, you know, we're a Delta hub. And it's also a, uh, it's a good partnership to have because you know, they have backup, right? So if you have your sure. own plane uh, and something happens to your plane, all, all of a sudden you're scrambling because you need to find a carrier that's willing to like take a aircraft out of scheduled service to then transport your team to another city. Uh, being de being a Delta team and a Delta hub, we know that we have fallback if, if something were to happen to our, our plane, we could just pull one from another gate over at MSP prior to you know, sitting on the ground for a while, trying to find another solution. And then like for the hotels, do you pick the hotels or is it kind of a, a, a committee with like, do the players have say in any of that? 
Are there hotels that they like? They don't. I'm not asking you necessarily to name sure. specific hotels, but are yeah. there some that they like? They don't like. Yeah, there are certain stipulations in the collective bargaining agreement that hotels must, you know, must have. You know, whether it's room service for certain hours or a certain level of service, uh, it's predominantly falls on my shoulders to negotiate the hotel contracts uh, and. You know, there's there are certain people that I go to to ask their opinion on hotels. You can't. What I've learned over the years is you can't ask too many people because everybody has a different feeling on what sure. is a good hotel and what isn't. Uh, I was once told, in fact, this hotel that we're at in Detroit, um, I was once told by a player that it was a minor league hotel, and I said, "Well, why why do you say that?" And he said, "Because it's only four stories." <laughs> and I said, that, "That that doesn't really make any sense." Um, because this is one of the nicest hotels in the area that <laughs> and and quite frankly probably you know for for Joe Schmo off the street probably one of the more expensive hotels if anybody was supposed to call and or if anybody was to just call for a you know a personal stay so you have to be careful with how you approach the hotels um uh, uh, how you approach deciding on hotels because like i said everybody in our traveling party has a different view on what a nice hotel is versus not a nice hotel well that brings up a question too uh with the with the contracts and the, uh, the agreements and all that do again i'm not asking for specific players but do any players have specific things in the contract that that you need to take into consideration either in a hotel or in the in the uh, flights uh yeah the a number of players have suites in their contract. So with when a player signs a contract with a major league team, their agent might negotiate a suite on the road in the contract. And certain times you have more, you know, certain years you have more players with suites in their contracts than others. And what, what I have to do is I have to make sure that whatever hotels we're staying at has enough suites available over our dates to ensure that those players who have that in their contract get them now it does say if available in their contract so okay. in certain instances if a suite tell or if a hotel t says to me hey we you know we have a larger group in house um, that, that are using a number of our suites we're only able to offer you x amount you know can we work with that then i have to go to a, to a, you know, a couple of players and maybe say hey look this next trip to chicago I'm going to have to put you in a regular king room. I know it's in your contract, but if available and this trip, it happens to not be available. So, you know, it, it it's not it's not a huge deal for for some guys for one stay to not be in a suite. But, you know, they they grow accustomed to what is in their contract and what they're used to. So try to make sure that all the players are taken care of. Yeah. And, and do you look into restaurants? I don't know, like the, does the team go out to eat as a team at, at all into restaurants? Or do you look into any of that for either the team or various players? You know, a couple of times throughout the season, the, the players will do a, you know, players only dinner or a team oh. dinner. And, um, you know, or, or the manager might say, hey, I'd like to host a staff dinner on this off day in Detroit. Can we set up a, you know, a private room at a steakhouse or something? Though so those instances do happen uh it's not every trip um you know another request i usually get around this time of the year is hey we're going to have our fantasy football draft on the off day in you know cincinnati can we get a room at the hotel that's big enough to you know host you know 20 30 people and we'll order food and beverage you know that that type of stuff so those requests do come in you know but not not every trip and do you always travel with the team i do no, so what happens? Like you, you know, you mentioned last night there was a rain delay. If there's a rain out and then the the stay is extended a day, or you have to come back a couple weeks later, but it wasn't planned, uh, how how big of a headache is that for you? Uh, it's a pretty big headache. Uh, so a, a few a few years ago, we had I think it was in 2019, we were playing in Anaheim, and it rained for about 10 minutes, and their field doesn't drain very well because they don't get any rain, oh. and they don't have a tarp. So the field was, it was washed out. We had already checked out of our hotel. So when we checked out of our hotel, the luggage truck comes to the hotel and picks up all of our personal bags and brings them out to the airport and just leaves them there until our plane is ready to be loaded. So all of our bags were gone. Everybody checked out of their rooms. We get rained out. And 
we both us and the angels were off the following day. So that's when the game was rescheduled for. So I had to get on the phone with the hotel and say, Hey, do you still have 72 rooms available <laughs> for tonight? Um, I don't really care who gets what room. We just need keys. We're going to be coming back there in an hour. Uh, Luckily, the hotel had space for us, uh, so we were able to get back in there. And then I just had to call the truck company and tell them to go back to the airport, pick up all of our luggage, and bring it back to the hotel. Only so we could do the same thing, you know, 24 hours later when we checked out. But, um, you know, we've also had to fly to another city later on in the season to make up a game. And that's a little bit more of a headache uh, for everybody because it adds another road trip. Right. Um it adds, you know, two flights because you have to get there and get back. Um, so it's it's quite costly to teams to have to fly to fly back to a city for a makeup game. But you know, in reality, there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, right. I was a little worried about a a rain out yesterday, and you know, we were playing the Diamondbacks who only come once a year, and the mutual off days that we had remaining for the rest of the season weren't great, and. You know, it would have caught actually we would have been fine because we would have been home um, for both of them. So we wouldn't have had to, you know, fly home just to play. Sure. The Diamondbacks, however, would have, one of the scenarios had them leaving San Diego to go home for an off day before a, a home game. So they would have had to fly all the way back oh. to Minnesota from San Diego. And the other one was them flying from home to New York. So they would have just had to make a pit stop in Minnesota. So there's all these different scenarios that come up. And, you know, sometimes when it comes to mutual off days, you're just at the mercy of what the schedule says. And, you know, all the games have to be played, right? So, oh, yeah. so you're just well, kind of, you just kind of roll with the punches. And another headache, although this is a good headache, uh, the Twins are on pace to make the playoffs. So if they make the playoffs, like, are you already start looking at hotels and, air, you know, the air travel and all that for possible playoffs? Yeah, yeah, I'm a pretty superstitious person, so I don't like okay. I don't like doing stuff like that at this point of the season. Um, but on the other hand, I have to be prepared. So, you know, a lot of our hotel agreements, actually, all of our hotel agreements have postseason language in them. You know, you know, guaranteeing a certain number of rooms. Okay. Um, and so, so on the hotel side, I'm pretty much set. You know, it it's still as smart to call all of those hotels and you know at least put the feelers out there that, Hey, you know, this scenario might happen. And if it does, we are going to take you up on the contracted rooms and probably need more. So can you hold an, you know, X number of additional rooms? Um, Delta has been really, Delta is always really good about our flight schedule and they have a full understanding of how the postseason works and that there might need to be a plane sitting in Minneapolis on a certain date to be ready to fly us somewhere. Um, you know, the Delta charters, Delta has a number of basketball teams, hockey teams, baseball teams. So they, they know they've been through this every year. Um, but again, you, you, with the baseball playoffs, you might not know where you're going until the last yeah. day of the yeah. year. Um, fortunately for us, if we make the postseason, it's going to be because we won the division, meaning we're playing at home for the first series of the year and not our first series of the postseason. So we're not going to have to travel anywhere unless we advance. So that gives a, gives me a little bit of a buffer zone of time to prepare for any potential road trips in the postseason. That helps absolutely. Yeah. So, what is your off season like? I, you know, I know you're you're during the season you're incredibly busy. I can see all that. Like, what approximately do you do during the off season if you have an off season? Well, the off season is more uh, it, it's really planning the next season. So I've actually already started doing our hotel contracts for next season. I've submitted our flight schedule to Delta. Um, but in the off season, it's, it's making sure that everything for the following season is complete and ready. Uh, you, you know, as soon as the off season hits, my mind immediately shifts to spring training. Uh, I'm responsible for securing housing for all of our front office personnel that go to Florida. So you know, whether that's, you know, 20 people or you know, t just in the baseball department, 20 people or 35 people, I have to find housing for all of them. And housing in Florida in February and March is not that easy to find because everybody wants to get out of the cold weather states. Sure. So I spend a majority of my time in the off season, 
you know, working on spring training and then just be just kind of lining up everything for our 12 to 14 road trips for this for the following season, depending on how many we have. Um, just so then once the season starts, it's more of maintenance versus planning okay. uh, because everything's already planned. Thanks. Makes total sense. So with your vast career, your vast knowledge, could you give us a, a Mike Herman travel tip? Uh, my biggest travel tip is to make sure all of your luggage is clearly marked with name, address. Actually, I don't put my address on there. Name <laughs> and phone number on all of your belongings. Um, you know, we have a lot of, we travel with a lot of bodies and everyone brings a lot of personal suitcases or carry on bags. And more often than not, something gets lost, even on a charter whether the guy left it in his car and forgot to put it on the truck at target field before we left, or whether the, it made it to the hotel and the bell staff has it in the bell closet because there's no markings on it. You know, we hand out luggage tags to all of our traveling party with their name on it and the name matches the rooming list. So in theory, if Mike Herman's bag shows up at the hotel, they know where to put it. So more often than not, when somebody calls me and tells me that they're, suitcase is missing or they their suitcase hasn't been delivered to their room it's because either the tag fell off or they used a different suitcase that doesn't have that tag on it and i always ask people like how do you expect your suitcase <laughs> to get to your room if it doesn't have your name on it nobody's you know nobody's a mind reader here so um, exactly so if you'll indulge me before i let you go if you'll indulge me i know you're a baseball fan so um favorite twin of of all time uh, you know what? It's probably it's hard to say of all time. Uh, you know, I grew up loving Kirby Puckett uh, because I grew up in Minnesota, and you know he was the guy, right? Sure. He was the guy when when uh, when I was a kid, and you know, I used to have a T-shirt with a caricature of Kirby with the big head and the little body <laughs> and the leg kick. Um, but in this job, or since I've worked for the Twins, I have had so many good relationships with people. And we just had Joe Maurer inducted into the twins hall of fame and, you know, all of the former teammates of his that came back for this event. You know, I just, I spent Saturday night um, just rehashing stories with them and, wow. and, you know, it just, it never gets old. You know, the, the Nick Puntos of the world, Brian Dozier, uh, Jim Tomey, Denard Spann, uh, Jesse Crane, former White Sox. Yeah, as you, as you know, uh, you told me too. Yeah, Matt Career, you know, like it, it, these guys who 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 kind of I kind I kind of came up with them, right? So we're about we're all about the same age. Um, we had a lot in common, and the, the greatest part is like none of them have changed. You know, that's cool. It, it's been a number of years since they were they were all together on the Twins as, as a team, but as soon as they get together, it's like time hasn't passed no like no time has passed and you know our organization has taken a t taken the history and made you know all of these teams that kind of were glued together for a number of years and it, we've, we've kind of kept them together right so when they come back for these events it's like like i said it's like no time has passed good it's very good to hear Mike, I really appreciate your time. Um, it's excellent, fun learning about the, the all that entails in your job. I really appreciate it, I, and, and I wish you luck. I wish the Twins luck for the rest of the season. You know, go out there and win, win the win the pennant, win the the World Series. Man, that'd be great. That'd be great, John. From your mouth to God's ears. Well, if they do, I'm going to probably bug you back for an update interview. Then. All right, sounds good. Thank you for your time, Mike. Good luck. All right, take care. Take care.